many of us have health complaints and uh, other sort of issues that we're dealing with alongside the fertility diagnosis. And a lot of times we myopically focus on the low AMH, the anti-malarian hormone, which is really a, is, is a poor predictor of pregnancy success, really only tells us how well you'll, you'll do with IVF, not talking about getting pregnant naturally. Um, and we see the, you know, the AMH go up all the time, and obviously FSH will, 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 fluctu- uh, will fluctuate as all. So it's not when you have this diagnosis of low AMH, high FSH, premature ovarian insufficiency, diminished ovarian reserve, and more, it's really, uh, let's look at the other missed healing opportunities, not myopically focusing in on the diagnosis, which so many of us do, which makes sense, right? Because if we've been told our only option is we go to the OBGYN, we, we're struggling, then we're referred to our uh, REI, and um, you know we're, we're told IVF. So um, we're going to be talking about some things for you to look out for. Um, and I don't sort of, I share this here because some of the things I've, I've dealt with as well as many of all of our a lot of our clients too dealing with some of these issues. Digestive problems. So many people that we work with are either alternating between constipation, diarrhea, they got acid reflux, something's going on with the digestion, be it gas, burping, bloating. All these things are common but not normal. So that's a sign. You know, it's not about just taking um, you know, uh, antacids or or things to help with constipation. It's well, why is it there to begin with? So let's dig dig uh, uh, dig deeper. So that's a healing healing opportunity number one. You got digestive issues. Not about running to IVF yet uh, yet. You know IVF and so and definitely here at Fab Fertile, we are not anti IVF. We're let's work on your health. You either get pregnant naturally or if you do go to IVF, you'll actually improve your chances of it working because we see people that have gone gone through multiple failed IVFs. No one's you know looked under the hood to look at their health for both the male and the female partner. It's not just about you focusing on your health and no one's even looked at his semen analysis or or if they have looked at his semen analysis maybe there's an issue with it and then you know you're being told to go to ICSI so this is um, looking at both of your health in a very targeted manner using functional testing and targeted diet lifestyle changes to optimize your preconception health which is critical for the health of your the pregnancy for the health of your child for your future generations so really taking you know a short period of time now although obviously anytime you start trying to conceive you want to have your your child you want to grow your family so we, you know we understand the impatience part i do believe that the uh, fertility clinic really perpetuates that you know you're too old the eggs are too old you'd better rush 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 you know having people tell me they've been advised to do an aggressive ibf which is absolutely like counterintuitive to what you know being able to conceive, which is receiving and getting into that you know rest and digest instead of you know hammering away with your you know let's make this happen and pushing and controlling. So digestive issues, you've got that time you know time to dig in, missed healing opportunity, mood problems. We see we see a lot of people that have been dealing with anxiety their whole life. Or they could also have anxiety, depression uh, when they're on the fertility journey. You could be dealing with panic attacks. I mean, people have experienced that throughout their life. Um, ADHD, those are clues. If you've got something going on with your, your neurotransmitters, the, 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 the gut-brain connection is well, well documented in all sorts of um, uh, peer-reviewed studies. And so it's important to see, and also irritability, like hormone, you know, uh, hormonal issues going on. So mood issues, if you got those, dig into that. It's not just about taking me see many people taking, um, you know, anti-anxiety medication or they're on uh, medication for depression. Not to say you don't need the medication, but um, when you start to work on your diet and lifestyle and address trauma and stress with, with support, um, and we have part of our program, we refer out to therapists, we have uh, EMDR, which can really help with um, trauma. It's about um, ha- perhaps then with the help of your doctor to taper off that medication. Um, so mood problems, if that's you, it's time to dig deeper. Skin issues. We see this a lot. People with acne, with psoriasis, with eczema, with um, dermatitis, with hives, where you know you all of a sudden hives start coming in, you become anaphylactic to things. So skin problems, that's a huge clue Skin is a direct reflection of the gut. If you've got weird scratchy things, you're using all sorts of creams to, to, you know, to, to help this. So I've interviewed uh, Dr. Anna Maria Temple. We talked all about eczema and she was saying, you know, eczema is not a lotion deficiency. It is looking at the gut and what are those gut infections, food sensitivities and more 
and you know using a cream is just not getting to well you know the that that missed healing opportunity and if your body is under attack by digestive issues you got mood issues skin issues it wants to survive to procreate and your reproductive system is is deprioritized so uh if you're dealing with skin problems that is a huge clue joint issues if you've got joint pain back pain muscle pain where you're just you know you're always you're stiff you feel um your joints hurt again inflammation you know what's going on there and also um many times people have this low amh high fsh dor poi um diagnosis and are on the fertility journey and um there's an autoimmune disease maybe you have celiac maybe you have hashimotos maybe you have uh, rheumatoid uh, rheumatoid uh, arthritis maybe you have lupus maybe you have uh, multiple sclerosis maybe you have an autoimmune issue and then pushing towards IVF when no one's dug deeper to look at you know well when was this triggered you know your body mounts an immune response to uh, an immune response to and chronic disease is is on the rise right now and and really the conventional method for handling chronic disease is pathetic. It's literally medication. Uh, no one again looks at the underlying missed healing opportunities. Again, if your body is under attack, it wants to survive and not procreate. And so taking that that targeted um, approach with testing, targeted diet, lifestyle changes can really help optimize your health, which optimizes your egg health and your partner's sperm health. So it's not like myopically focusing on what do we do for egg health? And we do these superfoods. We take bee pollen. We take, you know, maca. We're doing Vitex. We're, we're, um, you know, taking herbs. We're doing fertility teas. All that. That just wastes time. So that's just generalized recommendations, which may be right for someone, but that is not the, the thing that's going to shift the needle. It's taking a very targeted approach, using testing and following a plan. And so, um, so right now is to start by doing. An elimination diet. Yes, you can start that. You and your partner take out the top allergens. I got a whole episode on Get Pregnant Naturally of telling you how how and why to do the elimination diet. Uh, diet. So you can check that that in the show notes. But basically, you're taking out the top allergens. To and this is the gold standard to, t- to figure out if you have a food sensitivity. Take them out: gluten, dairy, soy, corn, peanuts, eggs, processed sugar, alcohol, uh, and make sure it's, you're not having any GMO foods. Take those out for ten days systematically reintroduce over the course of 30 listen to the listen to the episode i tell you exactly how to do it so i'm just going to take you through um it's one of our uh just a case study here so she had uh, premature ovarian insufficiency had the high fsh and the low amh for her it was secondary um fertility diagnosis and before coming to see us she had we see this a lot she had canceled ivf and she was labeled that poor responder um her cycle was irregular she was on long-term hormonal birth control. We do see that as a theme of people being on uh, the pill and they were put on typically for, you know, either acne or PMS or heavy cycles or irregular cycles and thinking that the pill would would um, solve these problems. It is a Band-Aid approach and no one looks deeper to see, well, what are the other healing opportunities going on? And you come off the pill, then you're dealing with a fertility issue. Not to say everyone that goes on the pill deals with infertility, but we see a lot of people being on long-term hormonal birth control. She had asthma, migraines, insomnia, sinus congestion, eczema or eczema, uh, anxiety. Uh, She had the poor digestion. So alternating between constipation and diarrhea and a lot of stress, a lot of stress, even seeing a family, seeing a pregnant person. um, This caused a lot of stress and it's very, very common. This We we specialize with um, people that are on the fertility journey because it's these, these triggers and the stressors if every if everyone around you, your church, your friend group, everywhere you go, you are you know you encounter people that are either trying to have their family, maybe all your friends right now are are expanding their family, and then you may feel stuck and so um, and not understood, and people say things and you feel triggered. All that is really important to acknowledge and to have someone that can uh, help you through it because otherwise you can be stuck down in that um, either feeling like anger, frustration. Uh, impatience or just feeling, you know, apathy or depression. And all of that is sort of on the cortisol side of things. And so you get to the the DHEA side of things is um, those renewing emotions such as happiness, joy, contentment, peace, um, you know, feeling, feeling good. Um, sometimes we can get glimpses of, of those, but if you're hanging out over there, that is equally as important 
to, to work on your, on your health. Uh, so we did the, the testing. So we did food, stool, genetic testing. We do blood chemistry review, not to diagnose, but to educate and looking at her, her partner. She had uh, non-celiac gluten sensitivity. So she was intolerant to um, gluten as well as eggs and yeast and whey and nuts and more. Um, and then we ba- we helped balance her hormones. She did have estrogen dominance. So even though, you know, you can have um, low estrogen, it may still be uh, estrogen dominance. Um, and she had low melatonin, which can be an indicator of uh, gut, and gut bugs. And she also had thyroid imbalance. Um, and then she had multiple uh, bacteria in her, her gut. Um, and she actually, her immune system from the gut, we found it was very low. So she got a lot of colds and flus. So we worked on that. And then she was, even though she was gluten-free before she came to see us, she was still getting gluten. So there, the markers in the, in the stool test were showing that, that there was still some gluten coming in for her. She was extremely sensitive. So it's important to look at cross reactors and really help with that. Uh, then her partner, we optimized his uh, blood sugar, helped him with sleep. And then she was pregnant uh, naturally within seven months into the program, she was told donor eggs, nothing would work. She went back in to do a retrieval and she found out that, uh, she was pregnant. So, um, many other stories just, just like that, where people with this diagnosis told nothing will, will work and they do the work, they get to work, follow the plan. And lo and behold, you know, they, they can get pregnant naturally, or if they do need to go to IVF, they improve their chances of it working. And the next one we have here is, um, talked a lot about this, but these missed healing opportunities where, you know, conventional medicine will look at your uh, blood work and really just say um, everything looks normal or there's a few things out of balance and maybe they might give you um, a prescription for something or maybe they may tell you, it's, you know, some some moderate diet changes, but um, especially if there's blood sugar issues, but really not, not a concrete plan. And so, um, you know, we take a very targeted approach to this using the testing. And then we see we're not diagnosing anything. So you would then work in conjunction with your, your doctor. We do have a medical doctor as part of our team, but she's our uh, medical case reviewer. So um, and she's she's uh, trained in, trained in uh, functional medicine as well. So really looking at this completely differently than your regular conventional doctor who might, you know, that medical gaslighting, you might be going in saying, hey, something's up with this. Can you dig deeper? And they either won't do it because of insurance issues or they just, you know, make you second guess yourself. And you go out, you're like, oh, OK, maybe it was all in my head. Maybe there wasn't a problem with my thyroid. Maybe there wasn't an issue with whatever whatever it may be that you want to test. You, you, it's really important to um, to find a provider that speaks your language. So when you're talking, you know, if you're talking about things for them to look into and they're like, I don't know what you're talking about, that's find someone else. Um, okay. So we see vitamin D, vitamin D being very low in the single digits or teens, it should be around 60 to 80. If it's low, it could be, you know, autoimmune issues, SIBO, giardia, some parasites, worms. Um, maybe there's high cor- uh, cortisol, which we see a lot. Um, and so vitamin D, if your vitamin D is low, supplementing is, can be part of it, but why is it low to begin with? Thyroid dysfunction. You see, you know that can be with it, that can be uh, impacted with it. So, an, uh, anovulation, irregular cycles. Um, uh, in recent studies, only four percent of healthy women were found to have subclinical th- hypothyroidism. The rate increased to fifteen percent with ovulatory infertility and forty percent with women with POF. So, um, digging deeper with the thyroid piece, not just looking at the TSH, looking at the full the full thyroid panel. Is really important to, to to optimize your thyroid. Blood sugar imbalance. We seem we talk about this every week in our clinical mastermind with our teams. We take a very we have a functional nutrition practitioners, fertility mindset coach, and have, and our medical case reviewer. And it's really like all eyes on a case, and literally over and over and over again. Blood sugar. So if you got you feeling hangry, sugar cravings, poor sleep, dig into the blood sugar piece. Uh, not to say that you're diabetic or pre-diabetes, but we're, we're looking at it before it even gets that way. So your blood sugar is off. That can impact your, your, your sex hormones. Um, and then poor sleep, sort of that chicken and the egg thing where the poor sleep impacts your blood sugar the entire next day. So um, you, you just never really get off that, that, um, that, that hamster wheel of trying to, trying to optimize your blood sugar. So it's really important to 
Um, look to see if you have blood sugar issues and then eat a, a diet and lifestyle that's going to work for that. I've got many episodes on Get Pregnant Naturally all about um, blood sugar. And then we have, uh, like we talked about, long-term hormonal birth control. So that can predispose you to these gut infections and um, uh, there's post-birth control pill syndrome. It can predispose you to gut infections, food sensitivities. You can eat this great diet, but maybe your body doesn't absorb the foods. So long-term hormonal birth control. If you were on the pill for years, like me, and put on it because I had acne in irregular cycles, no one dug deeper. Years later, my health began to, you know, began to um, take a nosedive. And so that I made all these changes, diet and lifestyle, address the gut infections and chronic stress. But if you've been on the pill and now you're trying to conceive and something is, is not working, it's really, again, you know, really important to dig into is there a gut infection food sensitivity and maybe you're not absorbing any of your your nutrients that can actually are impactful for your sex hormones the autoimmune disease like we talked about um if you got an autoimmune disease it's not about forging forward to that ivf you've got to really work on your diet and lifestyle we have we've helped multiple people that have you know Hashimoto's and nothing had worked beforehand and then they made the changes to their diet and lifestyle in a very targeted manner and lo and behold they get pregnant naturally when nothing had worked so if you're dealing with an autoimmune disease that is a clue and for you to you know that as I say the conventional medicine for autoimmune disease is just way behind the uh, the game in this and they're just going to give you medication so this is to really look at uh, what are those stressors on the body? And then we can start to um, we can start to then reverse these things. Um, under fueling and over exercising, maybe you're just um, not eating enough protein. We see that a lot. Not eating enough protein. Maybe you're doing too much vigorous exercise. Um, maybe that's what you know. Maybe you have uh, amenorrhea because of that. Um, and so it's important to see. Um, especially if you're doing more of a plant-based diet, not to say you need to go, um, if you're opposed to eating meat, um, but we need to see on your blood chemistry, what's going on with that. You know, are you, are you truly having enough protein and fats to prepare your body for a baby and having an open mind about that? Um, and, and being able to look to see what is the diet that's right for you? Cause there's all sorts of carnivore, vegan, you know, paleo, autoimmune protocol, like AIP diet and more, which have worked for someone, but are they right for you? Is it long term? And to really be like the 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 the, po- the, the main part here is to eat foods from the rainbow and um and get a customized diet and eat more eat more veggies is really also um another clue a key as well. So maybe you're in a stressful job working more than 50 hours a week. And then, you know, you're 50 hours a week, maybe you're taking work home. Maybe that whole, you know, your cortisol, it's flatlined or your your adrenals are tanked because you've just taken on too much. You're burnt out. I've done many episodes on, on that, feeling overwhelmed or burnt out. We see that a lot. We work with a lot of people in the healthcare field, nurses, doctors that are on the fertility journey, helping them. It is important. Sometimes you don't, it's not about quitting the job. Sometimes you need to step back set some boundaries. How does the job work for you right now? And, and you're, you know, you're, where you are in your life. So if you're in a stressful job, what can you do to really um, have that job work for you instead of having that, the, the job basically, you know, destroy you perhaps it's like, if it's impacting your health that much where all you're doing is working nonstop, um, you know, to me, it's important. You have a choice, you, you know, you can, you can look for other work perhaps, or you go into your boss and tell them, um, you know, tell them what you're looking for. And so, and if they can't meet it, then you have to make a decision. But more than 50 hours of work, of, of work a week, is time for you to, you know, have a look in the mirror and say, is this job serving me right now? And, you know, and your goals to expand your family. Trauma. Uh, we see a lot of people that either, actually a lot of trauma kind of around the relationship with their mother. Uh, with people's mother um, is a the the, you know, the mother wound is a theme we see, and also um, childhood trauma. Um, and so that's as part of our program, we take a mind body spirit approach, and we can we have emotional freedom technique, which is tapping. It helps with trauma. We do uh, obviously coaching, and there's therapy we can refer out for, and um, 
and also that intuition piece of, um, you know, knowing this is going to work. So obviously the diagnosis in itself can be traumatic. And also you may be dealing with other trauma from the past. So some of that stuff working on that eat fun, but we need to, instead of pushing it down, be able to get it out and have you know, give voice to it. So it's really important. Mind, body, spirit. Yeah, we just talked all about the biochemical stuff with the food sensitivities, the gut infections, um, you know, thyroid, blood sugar and more. But looking at the, the trauma, looking at the stress, how is all that impacting your body? Um, and get into that instead of like pushing ahead and typically we're working with type A people, which is that's who I track, um, pushing ahead, which is your superpower. But then we need to be able to move into that receiving piece and how do you believe it's going to work? How do you trust your intuition? How do you look for the synchronicities? How do you just know, you know, that the signs are all around you and this is, you know, this is working for you instead of having that, that, you know, little helmet on and you're just forging forward in a panic, um, which doesn't serve anyone. And so um, I was going to share here one where we had um, someone, she had one tube, one ovary, low AMH and high FSH, um, diminished ovarian reserve. And she also had endometriosis. And she had one failed IVF before, before she came to see us. Um, and she was, uh, she had a lot of on, on high antibiotic use. We see that a lot. And that was the case for me where I had UTIs and sinus infections. And I would just go to the doctor and say, give me the antibiotics now so I can get back to work. I'm busy. And that completely destroyed my gut health. And then I became allergic to all sorts of antibiotics. Um, so we, that was the case for her. She had digestive issues, um, nutrient absorption issues. Um, so not absorbing her nutrients. She had low stomach acid, um, which then, uh, opens the door for more pathogens, um, and, um, so that's important. So we, we address that through our, our protocols. Um, and then her adrenals were, or tanks. So she was not, she was waking up. She wasn't feeling refreshed. She had low energy. She felt easily overwhelmed. If that's you, you're like, Oh my God, I feel overwhelmed. So adrenals, we can, there's specific things we can do to help with that immune system, um, was down. She also had, um, um, she had a rapid growth of a cyst on her ovary and she did have um, blood sugar imbalance. And then she got to work, did the, um, the, the changes. She had some new, she had uh, multiple uh, food sensitivities to gluten, peas, almonds, walnuts. She had gut infections. So some bacterial, um, uh, some bacteria was present in her stool test as well as fungal infection. Um, she also had leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So her body was, mounting an immune response to her favorite foods. She had that low vitamin D, so she was supplementing, but it was still low. And then her homocysteine was high, so inflammation going on in the body. Um, and she also had an MTHFR SNP a genetic weakness, uh, or gene gene variant. And then after seven months following our program, she did the work, made followed, uh, did the testing, followed the diet and lifestyle that was very targeted for her. Uh, she went back to the clinic again, was going to have getting ready for a retrieval. And then she found out that she was pregnant naturally. This is after um, one tube, one ovary, you know, low AMH, high, high FSH, donor eggs, endometriosis, all of that. And she and she followed the program, did the work, and got pregnant naturally. The next one um, is these generalized recommendations. So there's a lot of superfoods. There's a lot of fertility books on the market. There's a lot of blogs, a lot of podcasts, actually, for giving you all this recommendation. So... The generalized recommendations and the DIY will only get you so far. You know, you can follow what someone else has done, but is it right for you? And you can kind of figure this all out by following some of these generalized recommendations. So maybe you've been told because you have diminished ovarian reserve, you need to take DHEA. That's a common standard of care recommendation, but maybe that's giving you, you know, it can, there's side effects with that with oily skin and hair loss and acne. Is it right for you? Um, is your DHA even low? Maybe it's not. Um, so it's important to then uh, dig into that piece. Maybe you um, have gone gluten free, but you're like, you know what? I didn't really even notice. I never really had any problems. Took gluten on your diet, knows nothing. Didn't even have an issue when you brought it back in. Thing is, gluten is one of the top inflammatory foods, and typically you need to take it out for 60 to 90 days. And if you're not pregnant yet, and then you're resistant to the fact of changing your diet, that is something to look into, right? And get support on that and have a guide to look at that. Because we see a theme 
of, of gluten being an issue and also the other allergens as well. So gluten light where you're like, Oh, I'm doing like 90% gluten. And you know, I did this too, like all this stuff I've done. So it's not like, <laughs> you know, all of us, we kind of get to a certain point and you're like, okay, I got to figure that I need someone to help me figure it out so I can fast track it. So you can DIY it. Or if you look for a guide to help you fast track it, basically, um, you know, you can go gluten light 90, 90%, 95%, but then that crumb that you have or that cake you decide to have that has gluten, that sets, you know, a, a cascade of inflammation in your body for days, weeks, months, and you never actually clear it. So if there's a problem with an inflammatory food, and some people will say, oh yeah, you know what, when I have cheese, that really gives me digestive issues. Or when I have corn, I feel stuffy. So if you know, like a certain food is causing an issue, Stop eating it. We don't need to take lactate. We don't need to take, you know, a lot of times that's it's not the lactose, it's the casein in the in the dairy. Um, we don't need to take these these supplements to be able to help us take a food that no longer serves us. And just because the food's not good for you now, as you heal your gut and you work on 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 the you know the diet and lifestyle side of things, most of the foods you can bring back in, but you've got to give yourself time to heal, and this in turn helps you get pregnant. Um, and so it's that very like reductionist view of fertility where we just focus on our egg health. We focus on, um, what we need to do to, you know, help with low AMH and high FSH. We follow these generalized recommendations where they tell us IVF and then they tell us, you know, it's a 5% chance of it ever working. You know, our, our success rate is 10 times, you know, 10 times that. So, um, when people have been told 5%, you know, 50% of people we help, with with these diagnoses, get pregnant naturally or improve their chances of pregnancy success. You know, many times you're told to do retrieval after retrieval to get as many eggs at you know ten thousand to twelve thousand dollars a pop. Like this, obviously, our program is an investment, but nowhere near the cost of doing five retrievals at twelve k, which is whatever that is. Um, you know, fifty k, sixty k, like it's insane. So um, it's important to work on your health. You'll either get pregnant naturally, or when you do go to the clinic, you'll improve your chances of it working. Um, and so same with doing, you know, acupuncture can be really great, but then you, maybe you're taking herbs. You don't know what's in the herbs. So you need to make sure they're from a, a vetted, a vetted place. Um, there's many, there's many dyes, heavy metals, things like that, that are, you know, contraindicated for, for pregnancy and health. Um, and so, and then you don't even know what you're taking. You're, you're downing all these things. So it's important to, um, again, not follow those generalized recommendations, follow a plan that's right for you. So we've got someone here. So 38, so diminished ovarian reserve, low AMH and high FSH for her. She had three canceled IVF cycles. Um, she had uh, three empty follicles, so three IVFs. So there was em empty follicles and she was advised donor eggs. Her FSH was always in the eighties and she was, she, her cycles was about 26 days and it was about two to three days long, um, in length. She didn't know she was ovulating. Um, she had an appendectomy and she had epilepsy as well. Uh, she had science infections, a lot of antibiotic use, irritability, anxiety on the birth control pill for 13 years. Um, her partner had insomnia. So so she did the test. We did the, the stool, the, the food, the genetics test, the blood chemistry review for both the partners. And we reviewed his semen analysis as well. Helped to balance her hormones. She had low cortisol and DHEA. Um, she had non-celiac gluten sensitivity, so she, and she was also sensitive to the food she was eating regularly, so she did the elimination diet with her partner. We helped with her liver, her liver health, um, thyroid balance, so she had thyroid issues. Her protein uh, intake was low. She was eating great foods, but he wasn't absorbing them, and the protein was too low. She had multiple infections in her gut, and she was also um, having issues with... Um, where she was gluten free, but but that she was still getting um, some of the, the cross reactors. She was still having issues with that. Um, so, which the, some of the cross reactors can be oats, corn, dairy, chocolate, and way more. Uh, many sometimes some of the um, gluten free products too, like tapioca or um, or more can can cause uh, potato starch can can cause reactions with people, um, especially if they have a leaky gut mental, emotional stress. So they were so feeling irritable and in, uh, her anxiety improved. And then after seven months in the program, she followed the plan with her partner. They did it together. 
um, her, her FSH came down, down to a seven. She went to see her RE and he said, it's a miracle. And we did, and we said, yes, it is a miracle, but you met your miracle part way. You did the work. And, um, and so then she was, um, and then she was told to, uh, she, then she decided to do an IVF and that worked and she just had her little baby in the summer. So, um, this is when she was told donor eggs were her only option. Nothing would work. Uh, we felt people with AMH as low as 0.04, get pregnant naturally, people with 0.02 regain their period after years of not having it and working on, you know, targeted um, diet and lifestyle changes. So um, yeah, the fat fertile method, like we talked about is includes, so we have access to functional testing, we ship it worldwide, food, food, stool, genetics. We also, if needed to, throughout the program, we may do hair, uh, hair testing, which looks at your, if there's heavy metals or nutrient imbalances and the, the vaginal microbiome. If you've got a history of UTIs or bacterial vaginosis, miscarriage, obviously anyone on the fertility journey, vaginal microbiome is extremely important to look at. Um, that could be later for you. And then a blood chemistry review. So we do those tests. And then we have coaching to help you and your partner implement these changes. We take a targeted, you know, targeted um, uh, plan with targeted diet and lifestyle changes, which can fast track your success. Because a lot of times you could you could DIY it. You just, sometimes there's self doubt. We don't, there's self sabotage. We don't know if we're doing the right thing. We give up before we hit the, you know, hit the, we're, you know, ha hacking away in the gold mine in there, sorry, in the, in the coal mine. And we give up before we hit the gold on the other side. So, um, and then at the end of the pregnant, you'll either be happily at the end of the program, you'll either be happily pregnant or if you do need to go to the fertility clinic, you'll dramatically improve your chances of pregnancy success. And we specialize in tough cases like, uh, low AMH, high FSH, premature ovarian insufficiency or failure, and diminished ovarian reserve. So if it feels right for you, I encourage you to go ahead and be ready to get pregnant in 2023. And if this is your year, I encourage you to go and book a call with me. We will come up with a customized plan for you and your partner to improve your chances of pregnancy success. And the link is below. You can also go to Fab Fertile and just go apply here and we can talk and see how we can help you. So thank you and take care.